this is how I use analog gauges with my job link kits. I have JL3KH6 charge and air kits. And so it's just a standard yellow jacket set of gauges. And as you see, I have a set of T's on here, which I'll list down in the description of all the parts and how much I paid for each one. And then I have a Sealrite coupler as well and a ball valve. Uh, everything made by Yellow Jacket, except for those T's on the front, they're actually made by a different company. Um, and I'll have all the parts listed down. This is kind of my setup on my gauges. And then I have my job link kit, which will now connect to it. So I don't actually connect it to the unit. I connect it to the actual set of gauges, which is, makes it a lot more convenient. And you'll set each one of these little modules to either suction or discharge. And the indication's on, on the bottom right there, red for uh, discharge, blue for suction. And you can see it on the back. You're able to flip between them. And I'm just kind of showing that now, as you can see. But once you have them set up on suction or discharge, there's no reason to ever change them. And so you just kind of have to look and see which one's which, put the, the blue onto the suction and the red onto the um, discharge or high side or whatever you'd like to call it. And that way you could now get an analog reading and a digital reading. The benefit of having that digital reading is it'll go ahead and calculate subcooling for you automatically, which just makes it so nice and easy. And I really don't look at the analog gauges unless I'm having issues and I need to have that additional uh, measurements. For the most part, I just use the app off my phone to go ahead and do the charging and the checking of the charge of the system. And there's also these temperature clamps. Now, the only thing you really got to do, it's the same red and blue that you set them to, just like you do the other modules. You'll set these to suction and discharge, and you want to make sure you clean your copper really well, because if not, they do not connect. They have to be able to um, connect to that copper and have a nice, clean piece of copper. And as you know, that can be challenging on older pieces of copper. And so I'll just take it and I'll just use that emery paper, which is aluminum oxide sandpaper, and just go ahead and clean off some copper and get a nice shiny spot to connect them. And they will actually stay connected. If not, you'll notice they won't stay connected. They'll connect and they'll disconnect. And it just makes it more difficult. Doing a little cleaning of the copper to where you put them on um, gives you a lot better reading some of that patina off that copper and so you could just get down to something you can actually connect with and so now what you can do is you're going to power them on by holding it down for like three seconds and they'll blink and turn on it's the same thing to turn them off you will hold them down for three seconds and they'll go off if you ever need to turn them off and they'll blink a few times when uh, to indicate that they are going off but you discharge the red one on the discharge line and the suction line, which is your larger line, you will put the blue one. And as you see, they're just flashing. If they were not connected, they would flash rapidly. But since they are connected, they just give you a nice little steady flash, just like those other modules that are plugged in for, for pressure. Now, you can also use, this kit also comes with air uh, temperature sensors, uh, which give you ambient air, but it also calculates wet bulb for you as well. And so I like, you could put the supply on the inside of the house and read actually the air going in, and that's helpful. But sometimes I just put it on the side of the unit to read the air going into the condensing coil and the air coming out of the condensing coil to make sure I'm having heat being pulled off the system. And that's really what I just use them for for the main part, unless I'm taking temperature coming out of vents. And they are helpful for that as well. And they do come with like little magnets on there, which allow you to put them on the unit and they stay put. And the magnets are quite powerful. And it's important to make sure that you keep the dust cover. And these have the same thing. Red, red is going to be your, um, your return and, um, and your blue is going to be your supply. If you're going to put it on your outside unit, it's going to, 
the red's going to be the hot air coming off the top of the unit and the blue is going to be the cooler air going being sucked through the condensing coil now before we get to the app i want to um show you the this fitting the seal right fitting which is pretty important because this keeps you from releasing tons of freon when you screw on and off your your discharge line or your high side line it's a really nice fitting to have that fitting number is one nine two zero eight it's made by yellow jacket it's called a seal right coupler and It'll go right on there. And then just put on your, your suction. Which I don't use one of those seal rights. Some people do. I don't find it necessary on the suction. It's personal preference as long as you're not discharging tons of Freon out, out your customer system or your own personal system. Boy, that cap was a little tight on that one. Typically, I would not lean over unit, but I'm trying to, you know, get everything in for the camera on this one. All right, so we're all connected. Now we can get over to the app and take a look and see what it looks like whenever we crank this guy up and how it looks on the app. All right, let's take a look on the app and see what it looks like when we crank her up. Okay, as you can see, we got to select the freon we're going to use. Then it'll give us the rest of the readings. And right now the system isn't cranked up and we can see the air readings as well. And your sub cooling, you want it to be around eight to 10. And so we're about to crank her up. I'm going to throw the disconnect in there and there we are, as you see. The pressures are leveling out and the system works pretty fast. Um, those little modules really pick up to the phone and the phone really picks them up and you get a pretty accurate reading. It's not very laggy at all. It's a pretty cold day today. It's about 63 degrees outside. And we've got a nice eight Fahrenheit on, on subcool. And you can see I'm getting some heat being discharged. So that's all pretty good, guys. That's how it works. I hope you like the subscribe. Take it easy and have a great rest of your day.